Hey guys, Victor here coming at you with another deck profile and today's focus is going to be on Tier Limit Lightsworn, which is pretty much like one of the main things that people are testing out in this current format uh, whenever it involves Tier Limit and Lightsworn just because, you know, you're able to pretty much mill your entire deck off just one turn alone and, um, you know, synergy like that is honestly just invaluable, right? Because you're going to mill everything, uh, you're going to build a really big board and honestly, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so with that out of the way, let's just jump straight into the deck profile. Now, as always, we're going to be starting off with the monster lineup. But we're going to be focusing on the Lightsworn aspect first, just because it's filled with like a bunch of new cards. And I feel like the new cards are the reasons why you're able to actually play something like Lightsworn Tournament. So as a result, we're going to be playing three Lightsworn Dragon Link, one of the best cards to be released out of Legacy of Destruction when it comes to like Lightsworns or just cards in general, because it does so much. Um, so all you really need to do in order to get this card off and use its effects to its max ability is have a Lightsworn Monster in the Grave, which, you know, this deck likes to mill and get cards in graves, so it honestly shouldn't be too hard. And that's because if you have a Lightsworn monster in your graveyard, you're able to special summon this card from your hand. And then, if this card is special summoned, uh, and it doesn't have to be by that effect, right? It's just special summoned in general. So if you bring it back like a cross sheep or a Weiss, or you summon it with like a zombie vampire or an ancient fairy dragon, it will still get its effects. And um, this effect that I love is that when it's special summoned, you're able to foolish any Lightsworn card from your deck to the grave. So you can send your spells, your traps, your monsters. And um, it pretty much gives you access to whatever combo line you need at the moment. Like you want to mill more, um, but you want to also try to draw, you make the Minerva exceed. You want to synchro summon to set up your zombie vampire play, uh, you know, make the Minerva synchro. Uh, if you just want to like try to stun your opponent out, you can just go activate Lightsworn Dragon Link, send uh, Lightsworn Aegis, for example, and then boom, you have an instant negate for anything like a Dark Ruler, no more, or a Talents, whatever. Uh, this card literally just gives you access to whatever you need at the moment, and it's just really good. And then on top of that, when it's sent to the graveyard, you're able to add any dragon monster with 3k attack, 2600 defense from your deck to your hand. Um, we're only playing Punishment Dragon just because that's the only card that actually has synergy with the lights or the tier limit portion, but um. Yeah, you know, it's fine. That effect honestly doesn't really matter too much. It's literally just there to help us get Punishment Dragon uh, pretty much at whatever moment we want. And then to accompany the three Lightsworn Dragon Link, we're going to be playing three Weiss Lightsworn Archfiend, another phenomenal card release in Legacy of Destruction. And it basically makes it so that your Wolves and Felice are no longer bricks because it just takes those cards and it, it takes any Lightsworn card, it puts it on top of the deck. And then you special summon this card and you get to mill two cards. So, you know, you take your Wolves, you take your Felice, you put it on top with this card, you special summon it, you mill the Wolf Felice, and then you get one other additional card as well. So hopefully it's like a Tail Limit card or another Lightsworn card just so that we can continue plussing. But, uh, this card also was really good. And then when it's sent to the graveyard from deck, you're able to also target one other Lightsworn monster. And it, it can't be a Weiss, but that's perfectly fine, right? Um, and then you can special summon it. So, you know, if you end up milling like Weiss and Lightsworn Dragonling at the same time, you can trigger Weiss's graveyard effect to bring back your Dragonling. And then Dragonling special summon effect will activate to mill another card. And then you just continue comboing off from there. Uh, then... Speaking of Wolf, we're going to be playing three Wolf Lightsworn Beast. So I don't know what I can really say about this card. You know, you don't want to draw it ideally unless you have a Weiss. And even then, it's like if you, you only want one at most. Uh, if you're good at the game, which most Lightsworn players are, obviously, you're going to be milling this card off like your Minerva's all day, every day. <laughs> uh, and then it's a, mon it's a mandatory effect to bring itself back from the graveyard. So uh, just make sure that you're aware of that. So this card pretty much always has to be chain link one. Uh, I know a lot of people get off like caught off guard and they think they can rearrange their chain links however they want, but not with Wolf. This card has to be chain link one, uh, unless you're like chaining multiples, of course. But since it's mandatory, it always has to go first in the chain link or as close to first as possible. And then to accompany that, um, we're playing the one Felice. You don't really need more than one, honestly. Uh, Weiss's effect and it being a tuner is more than enough and uh, the second one almost never really comes up and plus you don't really want to brick too hard on this because it's not a pure Lightsworn deck so yeah one Felice more than enough to get the job done uh, just be aware though that Felice unlike the other Lightsworn cards has to be milled by a monster effect if you mill it with like Charge of the Light Brigade for example it will not activate its effect to special summon itself which is why it's a little bit worse than cards like Wolf but we still play the one anyways um but we're not done with like the Lightsworn portion there. Uh, we're also just playing two right in hand of the Lightsworn. I just really like this card. I think in addition to like Rhino Heart, it's probably like your best normal summon. Just being able to bait out hand traps. And if its effect is able to resolve, you get to mill two cards. You know, just a good generic card. And much like Dragonling or like any other Lightsworn monster, you can always bring it back from the grave with Weiss. So uh, you're pretty much always going to be able to get like your additional mill too. Um, as long as you combo hard enough. 
And then for the final part of the Light Sworn Engine, we're just playing the One Punishment Dragon. Like I said, this is basically just to help us fuse with our tier element monsters. But sometimes it does come up where you're able to special summon this card and then shuffle everything that's face up, banished, and in the grave back into the decks. And just recycle everything, you know? But, um, it's fine. <laughs> you don't need more than that. You don't want to brick too heavily on it. So just One Punishment Dragon is more than enough to get the, do to get the job done. Uh, and that's it for the Light Sworn portion. And then we play the Tier Limit portion. So you play the three tier cash on summon, whether it's normal or special summon, you get to mill three cards from either your deck or your opponent's deck. And then you get to mill two more cards from your deck if this card is sent to the graveyard by card effect. Uh, then we're also playing two Tier Limits Rhino Heart. This is something that I'm always going back and forth off, forth and back and forth on if I want to play more than two. But um, Honestly, two is perfectly fine for this deck. Like I said, it's not the tournament portion. While it does help out heavily, it's not like the main focus. We basically want to play the light sworn portion to like its max potential, and the the tournament aspect is just there to help us enhance the light sworn stuff. But uh, yeah, two perfectly fine. Uh, then for the one of tears, you play the one Sharon, the one Havnus, and the one Merley, and then that's it for the tier limit portion but we still play like you know like the supporters to help us also enhance the tier limit aspect instead of just the light sworn aspect being the two fenrirs uh this card pretty solid you know even in the current format just having the fenrir body on board is immediately threatening to your opponent uh and then it also helps you search out your tier cash which helps you get your milling going by milling three more uh you're playing two beast king of the swamps so i was constantly finding myself needing something else just because the Light Sworn monsters and the Tier Limit monsters by themselves, honestly, besides milling, they don't really have too much synergy, right? So you'd constantly find yourself in a position where you'd send a Tier Limit monster, but you wouldn't have anything to fuse with. So I decided to throw in two Beast King of the Swamps to help remedy that problem. And then that also gives us access to cards like Rule Coloss, which allows us to play through Nibiru a lot more easily, uh, which, you know, is always an added bonus. But yeah, two Beast King of the Swamps, really good. And then not even just like Rogue Coloss, right? It also helps you with like your Exceed plays because you can still play the Bahamut Toad package. Um, it's a level four, so you can normal summon it for Minerva if you get really desperate. Uh, this card, yeah, you got to play it with this version. And then for the final monsters, you just play the Shufflers. We're milling a bunch. It's a no-brainer to play something like this. And then like every deck is still like super graveyard reliant. So yeah, you got to play the Medora and the Keldo. And with that... That's the monster lineup, and now we can finally move on to the spell and trap portion. Now, compared to the monster lineup, the spell and trap portion is incredibly small, <laughs> and that's because I always wanted to keep it at, like, 40 cards. But even so, like, everything gets the job done. I don't really think the ratio should change all too much. So, with that in mind, we're going to be playing three Primeval Planet Pearl Rhino. It searches any tier monster and boosts your fusions and your tier monsters. It pops cards when tiers get fusion summoned back into the deck. Um, you know, it's just one of your main consistency pieces that also just threatens the board immediately. And then... Something that I'm not too fond of, but you still should probably be playing, is three Charge of the Light Brigade. So the reason why I don't really like Charge of the Light Brigade is because it has anti-synergy with your Tier Limit monsters. And by that I mean it sends for cost, right? So as a result, if you end up milling a tier card, it doesn't trigger. It doesn't matter if it's a spell, trap, or monster effect. This will not trigger any of your Tier Limit cards. Um, and like I thought about maybe playing Solar Recharge instead, but then I remembered that... Ash Blossom is still kind of played, so Solar Recharge kind of sucks. <laughs> Especially when that card gets Ash and you're starting with three cards, you just you just feel horrible. So um, yeah, we're just playing the three charges with Light Brigade, and we're just going to take the L on the chin if we do end up milling a tier card. It's honestly fine, uh, just because it does give you access to your, literally whatever Light Swarm monster you need for this situation. If you just want like your Dragonling, your Weiss, even if sometimes, you know, you could justify adding like a Wolf to your hand if you already have a Weiss in there. So yeah, three charges with Light Brigade for consistency reasons. And then the only two of spell that we're playing is Tear Element Scream. Mills three, lowers your opponent's monstrous attack, searches the trap. Um, yeah, we're, we're basically just playing it because it mills three. Like I said at the beginning of this video, our ultimate goal for this deck is to mill everything. So, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, you got to play it. Uh, then you play the one, Tear Element's Grief. And this card actually has a lot, a lot of really cool uses as well. Um, thanks to the addition of, like, you know, Raiden, uh, that happens to be a warrior monster. So... If you have a Tailman's Grief, you go normal Raiden, mill two, uh, then you activate Grief, special summon Rhino Heart, send Raiden because it's a warrior like Rhino Heart, and then you can activate your Rhino Heart's effect from there. So, you know, just that cute little bit of synergy that you have that you otherwise normally wouldn't. And then it also adds like your banish traps from your banish zone to your hand. So, you know, whatever. Uh, then one regular Foolish Burial because this deck likes to mill. And that's it for the spell lineup. And then we play a couple of traps being the two Tailman's Soliac. Uh, it negates monsters it searches tier monsters uh 
it's just a phenomenal card. And then the one Lights Horn Ages to help us beat cards like Dark Ruler No More, Forbidden Droplet, you know, things of that nature. Um, just because as long as you have a face-up Lights Horn monster, you can negate at least one card. So, and it negates literally everything. So, it's pretty good. <laughs> and with that, that's the Spell and Trap lineup. 40 cards, like I said earlier, and now we can finally move on to the extra deck. Now that we're finally on the extra deck portion of the video, we're going to be focusing on the Link Monsters first. And we're going to be talking about the one that's probably my favorite being Cross Sheep. Just because, like I always say in like my videos whenever like tier elements are involved, this card, the versatility that it offers you is just unmatched. Um, especially because you can pretty much realistically get all four of its effects off, right? Um, especially if you're main decking or siding cards like Triple Tactics Talent. And let's just go over the effects really briefly. So if you have a Ritual... Uh, that it points to you get to draw two cards discard two cards so this is really helpful for like the tier limit portion and just getting lights or monsters in the graveyard in general for your uh dragon lings effect um if it's a synchro all your monsters are boosted by 700 really good at helping you deal with towers um especially or towers like monsters especially with like the face up permeable planet pearl or rhino for example as your tier monsters can very easily get to over 4k if it's an exceed monster all your opponent's monsters lose 700 attack and then the most important one being the fusion monster where you're able to special summon any level four or lower uh monster from your graveyard and that, that that effect alone honestly is more than enough reason to like warrant playing this card right just because there's so many viable targets that you can get back from your grave whether it's like your light sworn dragon link uh raiden if you want to mill two rhino heart if you want to send a specific tier monster to grave or even like the more unconventional ones like beast king of the swamps if you just need a water monster to make your bahamut toad plays you know you can just bring back a beast king of the swamp especially if you already have like a rhino heart on field uh this card it, it's just so cool with what it can do and i just love this card and then for the other links you play the one ip mascarina it literally serves one function and that's to summon sp little knight if you can't afford an sp little knight you can just play sprite sprint i guess but uh you know this card it's it's expensive for a reason it really is that good of a card and then for the final link monster you play the one appaloosa bow the goddess we have so much fodder on our field that we have to link off into something like this just to free up space and whether it's like one two three or four negates uh it's typically going to be backed by like a lightsworn aegis right so that means you're going to be safe from cards like dark ruler triple tactics talent uh forbidden droplet as long as they don't send a trap and it's just it's it's literally gg once you have this plus the ages on the field like 99 percent of the time so um yeah you got to play it just to free up space and it's just a you know a really good degenerate card uh, then that's it for the link monsters for the exceeds you play the one bahamut shark with the one totally awesome so even though there aren't that many dark monsters in the graveyard that we can typically fuse with like i said it's still very easy to make this card thanks to cross you bringing back like your water monsters and we pretty much always have access to punishment dragon as well so that's pretty much gonna be like your main target that you use to make mud dragon to make this uh but yeah uh it, it's fine and then it's very very easy to pair like appaloosa with the totally awesome with the aegis and then uh just other interruptions so yeah <laughs> uh this thing is honestly just really crazy and that's it for or not it for the exceeds that's it for like the toad package uh, we still play the one minerva the exalted light sworn if you're a good player, you're going to be milling three lights from cards and then drawing three cards. And, you, you know, it, it's a really fun card. We don't really care about the other effect where it's, if it's destroyed, you get to mill three just because the games are typically over by that point. But uh, we just care about summoning three and then hopefully winning the game off of whatever we hit. And then for the final exceed, you play the one zombie vampire, which may seem weird at first because the only level eight monster we play in the main deck is Punishment Dragon. But I'm here to tell you that's perfectly fine, right? Just because uh, the extra deck... Is going to be able to make this card pretty much every single time and that's because we're playing for synchros the one minerva the athenian light sworn so depending on how many light sworn monsters you use as material for this card you get to send light sworn monsters from your deck to the grave with different types so typically what you do is you summon this then you send two and those two will come back and then you synchro summon again uh, for visus and retara and then visus and retara on summon will search out any tailment spell or trap typically primeval planet pearl or rhino or tier element screen whichever one you don't really have in the hand and then from there uh, minerva will be allowing you to mill four more cards because you're able to banish four lights once for cost and then you get to mill four cards on the top of your deck and then once you're done with that you get to overlay these two for zombie vampire who also mills four more cards and uh, yeah you know just milling um, basically like a million cards on your first like summon or whatever and you, you can get all of that off of like one light sworn dragon or one wise depending on what you hit like it, it's very very easy to just mill a fourth of your deck pretty much right off the bat and um that's basically just off of one card without having to invest too many resources you know uh 
but the, the, they're just this combo is sick <laughs> i love it so much I, it's, it's so cool that i can't even put it into words honestly and that's it for the synchro monsters then we just play the fusions so you play the one mud dragon of the swamp Gururo, wings of resonant life uh one predacon dragostopelia your super poly targets even though we don't main deck super poly we still cite it and even without super poly these cards are still made very frequently just to help us recycle with our tier cards and then you play the tier fusions being the one tier elements rucolos and the one tier elements collider heart and with that that's the light sworn tier element deck i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please feel free to like, feel free to like comment subscribe and i'll catch you guys next time see ya